Okay, we are going to talk about alternate interior angles and what happens when we have parallel lines. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. And the hint on finding alternate interior angles is to look for a Z. So for example, if we locate the Z here, the alternate interior angles would be the ones that are tucked inside of the Z. So here, angle 3 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles. And because our lines are parallel, we know that our alternate interior angles are congruent. So if I told you that the measure of angle 3 was 50 degrees, we would be able to conclude that the measure of 6 would be 50 degrees. And the other Z is a little bit harder to identify. It sometimes looks backwards and isn't quite formed like the Z we are typical, typically used to seeing. However, it still does form a Z-type shape. And again, the angles would be tucked within what we have highlighted in our Z. So the alternate interior angles on this side are angles 4 and 5. And those angles would also be congruent. Okay, let's take a look at another type of angle here. We're going to talk about consecutive interior angles. And we have a theorem that states if two parallel lines in a place are cut by a transversal, then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. And remember, supplementary means that they equal 180 degrees. Now, to find, help you find consecutive interior angles, you're typically looking for C-type shapes. So it could be a backward C or a forward C. And let's go ahead and take a look here. So finding C-type shapes in this example would be 3 and 5 are consecutive interior angles. Consecutive meaning they are in a row on the same side of the transversal. So here we know that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 would have to equal 180 degrees. And we can also take that and try and identify the C in the other direction, which would be angle 4 and angle 6. If you added angle 4 and angle 6 together, those would also have to equal 180 degrees. So now we've talked about some different kinds of interior angles. Let's go ahead and look at an example of what we should be able to do. Here we have that line M is parallel to line N and that the measure of angle 3 is 70 degrees. So we know that this angle here is 70 degrees. The question is asking us to find the measure of angle 5 and the measure of angle 6. Well, first let's go ahead and look at the measure of angle 5 compared to the measure of angle 3. So if we sort of highlight angle 5 and angle 3, those are consecutive interior angles, which means they have to add up to 180 degrees. So we know that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 has to equal 180. Okay, now we can just go in. We know some of the measurements here. Measure of angle 3 is 70 degrees plus the measure of angle 5 is equal to 180. So to solve for the measure of angle 5, you would simply subtract 70 degrees from both sides. And we are left with the measure of angle 5 equal to 180 minus 70, which is 110 degrees. So we now know the measure of angle 5 is 110 degrees. Now what we can also do is look for the measure of angle 6. Looking for the measure of angle 6 compared to angle 3, so if we highlight angle 3 there, and in the same sense, highlight angle 6, those form a Z, so those are alternate interior angles. That means that these two angles are congruent. So the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 6 are equal. So if the measure of angle 3 is 70 degrees, the measure of angle 6 is also 70 degrees.